Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages in this glorious era of hunting brought on by title update 1 to Sunbreak, elements and statuses have been given new strong equipment to play around with, and I thought it might be fun to play around with what is arguably the coolest status there is. I mean, poison's alright, but it's basically just passive damage, paralysis is cool, but it just slows down the action of the hunt, and sleep? What a yawn! But what about Blast? Today's build is, of course, Longsword, directed by Michael Bay. Here we have a weapon that hits extremely quickly with a silkbind that gets through 10 weapon hits in no time flat, all of which have the potential to apply status, and so when I look at this, I thought, Element? <laughs> That's kitty play! I prefer blowing shit up! So today I'm going to show you an extremely fun variation on a longsword build that is also strong enough to kill a Kishala Deora in under 10 minutes in the hands of me, a non-longsword main. The main things this will be based around are blast itself, of course, meaning we have to get a big nasty blast longsword, status trigger, the new skill brought into the game on Gold Rathian's armor, which makes it so when you roll through an attack with iframes, your weapon will apply status buildup on every hit for a short duration instead of only 30% of the hits, and then finally a little silkbind called Sakura Slash, which sees you slice through the monster and cause a bunch of aftershock little slices afterwards, each of which fully capable of applying status buildup and thus triggering blast procs, allowing you to fly through a monster and leave a minefield behind in their face. So, the basics covered, let's talk about our weapon of choice. Of course, if I've already mentioned, this build focuses on longsword, but realistically this can be done with just about any other weapon in the game. Sakura Slash just feels like a particularly enjoyable way to watch fireworks go off behind you though. I've got noise in the back of my head. Our longsword of choice then is the Teostra tree blade. There are a couple of other decent choices, but none of them come anywhere close to reaching the sheer blast number that this one does. Not to mention with a little bit of sharpness management, we can easily push this weapon to hit purple sharpness with 330 raw, which is quite strong, even if we forget about the blast part, as hard as that is to do. When it comes to our weapon augments, we of course want the status upgrade, but unfortunately that takes up two slots and can only be done once, as opposed to element augments, and so our second augment here will be the affinity one for 5% bonus affinity on our weapon itself. Past that, there is also the question of the Rampage decoration. Technically speaking, over the duration of a hunt, you are likely to get more overall damage out of the various anti-species decorations, giving you a 5% bonus to your general damage throughout the hunt, but what I am using in the footage and what you will use if you want to stay as thematic as possible is the Teostra Soul decoration, which increases the damage of your blast procs by 20%, which is why every blast proc that you see in the footage hits for a whopping 240 damage every single time. As far as our switch skills, these are our sort of personal choice for this build for the most part. Drawn double slash is simply better. Your spirit combo is up to your preferences. As for special sheath versus sacred sheath, I recommend having one of them on each of your scrolls. Using special sheath for general combat to keep the extra parry and spirit gauge level up handy, and then switching to sacred sheath to do the big finisher when the monster is downed or otherwise incapacitated. Silkbind Sakura Slash is of course the most important one that we most absolutely have, and then Serene Pose versus Harvest Moon is once again personal choice, but given that this build hinges on Sakura Slash itself, I wouldn't recommend using your wire bugs on any other silk binds anyways, so it doesn't really particularly matter. The talisman that I'm using today is a particularly nice roll for a longsword build, two attack, two quick sheath, and a three slot, and if you don't have one quite this good, you can just make up the difference by leaving off a couple of less important skills, or through the magic of curious crafting on your armor to get new skills. That said, let's get into the actual set of armor itself. Today we are using the gold Rathian helmet and gauntlets, the jelly chest, the Teostra waist, and the hunter legs. And the decorations that you'll be putting inside of here are one blast attack, one handicraft, one sharp plus jewel, and one regular sharp jewel, three tenderizer jewels, two crit boost jewels, one wire bug jewel, and then you have a one slot to do with as you choose, with my personal recommendation being Spearbird's Call for extreme value from a singular one slot. With that, our total skill list adds up to four attack boost, three crit boost, three weakness exploit, three blast attack, three protective polish, three quick sheet, three chain crit, two teostra blessing, two status trigger, one peak performance, one critical eye, one handicraft, one Focus, one Slugger, one Stun Resistance, one Wirebug Whisperer, Spearbird's Call, and one bonus level of Foray. How'd that get in there? The Handicraft and Protective Polish together here means that you can stay in purple sharpness for 90 seconds every time that you sharpen, then you just have to sharpen once again to do it once more. And this allows you to maintain a pretty high amount of just raw damage in general, even outside of your blast procs. The Teostra Blessing, for anyone who doesn't know, at rank 2 gives you a 10% increase to blast buildup, which is of course perfect for our goals here today. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory for why it is here and exactly what it will accomplish for us. As for your curious armor crafting goals, there are a couple of 
of main things to worry about. First up is Wirebug Whisperer. Sakura Slash is one of our main attacks in this build and has a particularly long Wirebug cooldown when you use it, so getting your Wirebugs back faster is something you absolutely want. Secondarily, Evade Window. This skill will help you activate status trigger more often, as otherwise it can be a bit difficult to trigger this skill without diving headfirst into attacks so that you could easily just dodge positionally instead of getting smacked in the face. Alternatively, if you manage to get any of the skills that we have slotted in as decorations, you can of course replace those decorations with one for either Wirebug Whisper or Evade Window, so it all comes around quite simply. As well, a couple of these armor pieces are relatively lower tier, meaning that skills like Attack Boost and Weakness Exploit aren't out of the realm of possibility by any means, which easily lets you either stack them further or just replace the decorations. For the math of this build, then, without counting any sort of curious armor crafting of course, the weapon itself has 330 raw attack, 64 blast, and 5% affinity after our augmenting is done. For our raw, we have plus 7 for attack boost, plus 15 for chain crit, which makes 352, times 1.05 for attack boost once again, times 1.39 for our purple sharpness, and then we have 60% affinity with 3 crit boost, which is a 24% damage increase on average, so our total effective raw is 637. As for our status, we have the 64 blast plus 5 from blast attack for 69. Nice! Then we have a 20% increase from Blast Attack once again, then times 1.1 for Teostra Blessing for an effective Blast of 91.1, which as you can see in the footage is quite a massive amount that definitely gets the job done when it comes to explosions. And that covers the build itself. The playstyle that you will be using with it is relatively self-explanatory. Generally speaking, Sakura Slash is your friend and you want to use it as much as possible as using it will result in the fastest blast procs, but ideally you will be using it specifically when status trigger is active, allowing you to sneak in as many hits as physically possible during those windows of gameplay where you are applying status on every hit and therefore the highest chance of triggering a storm of blasts in a row. Outside of that, in this build you want to keep yourself in red gauge, generally speaking as much as possible, with the only time that you actually want to spend your spirit gauge buildup being when the monster is downed or paralyzed or asleep by using the sacred sheath charged finisher for an absolute buttload of damage. Outside of that, keep yourself on special sheath to give you more counter options to make your gameplay not only safer, but also give you more ways to level up your spirit gauge in general, and mostly just do your best to land as many hits on the monster as physically possible, as this is the status buildup way. Never stop hitting, never stop blasting. That just about covers it everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat special build using Longsword and Blast in tandem. If you have any other quirky build ideas, feel free to let us know in the comments and we'll have a crack at the ones that we find the most interesting and get them back to you. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye